All right, guys, it is Friday. It is raining. It has been, haven't had one in a while, but it has been one of those weeks. Let me tell you about it. All right, I'm gonna keep a smile on my face. That's what we do around here, but let me tell you about the week we had. So, um, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. So we got home late Monday from Pennsylvania from uh, Jason Works a Lot's house. This is what I come home to. Check this out, my lovely dog decided to chew a hole in my ranger seat. Oh, I still love her. Look at her, she still knows she's in trouble. I see you, you little troublemaker. So anyways, yeah, that was pleasant. Then let's see, where do we go from there? Oh yeah, we hauled the 120 into the job up at Rocky Point. And uh, I'm beginning to think, I don't believe in all the voodoo stuff, but I'm beginning to think this job is cursed. Let me tell you. So we haul into this job, I had to cut a few trees up, and you guys maybe seen some of this in the video. I had a brand new chain for the chainsaw. We filed on this thing for three or four hours. It never would cut right. I don't know what's wrong with the chain. I'm not a chainsaw expert. Oh, it was bad. So then the beloved 120 decided to pop a final drive, which is what we're going to tie into eventually into this video. I need to get you guys caught up to speed. So chainsaw went down, 120 went down. Captain Kleeman had the one, the Volvo. He was using it on their job. So I called him, I said, hey, I'm coming out for the Volvo, I need it. He's like, uh, might as well bring a hose with you. He put, he put a hydraulic hose on the Volvo. I'm like, oh my goodness. So uh, we had, we went and got the hose, come back, got, uh, yeah, got the hose, got the Volvo fixed, got it loaded up, took it up there, swapped it out with this one. I didn't get any video of it because it was getting dark we in a hurry, but trying to get this thing on the trailer with one track pulling and then getting it into the shop. That was a whole video in itself I missed out on, so I apologize for that. So uh, the next day we go up there, and I throw a log through the windshield of the Volvo. Wasn't even on the job five minutes, fired up, boom, log through the windshield. Didn't have my camera. I don't have any pictures of it, but yep, I flat root $400 worth of glass in a hurry. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, Did this day get any worse? Uh, about four minutes later, Aaron said, uh, I dropped the, uh, threw the track off the skid steer. <laughs> oh my God. So, so we got the glass replaced. Luckily we have an awesome glass shop in town. Got the glass replaced, got the track back on the skid steer and we almost got done and then the rain hit. So I told Aaron, I said, we're done for this week. We'll, we'll try that again next week. So anyways, it's raining. We're back in the shop. We're going to, um, I'm going to pop that cover off. We're going to pop this cover off this final drive right here. I doubt there's much we can do in there, but uh, I just want to get in there and get a little look-see. I got a feeling that just the drive gear might have broke. I don't know if there's a chance I can get just the drive gear. I'm honestly having a little bit of a hard time locating the final drive, so I don't know how much of a booger that's going to be, but I need to find out what I got. Todd from Trucker Track, I've been talking to him a little bit. He knows a lot of people. He knows a guy who knows a guy who borrowed from a guy that owes a guy that may have some parts. But we gotta figure out what parts we need. So uh, that's where we're at. So anyways, let's hopefully this can't go south on us and let's pop that cover off and see what's in there. If there's no oil in that thing, one, I'm gonna be bummed. Two, I'm gonna be mad. And three, I'm gonna be embarrassed because if you remember the video of me pulling it out, I talked about how I checked every fluid in this machine, except for the final drives, because it only had about three or four hundred hours on it run time. That's not gonna fit underneath there. What am I doing? It only had about three or four hours on it run, three or four hundred hours on it run time since I actually changed them. And I, I usually check it about every thousand hours. So uh, checked every fluid in the machine, but the final drives. So I really hope it's got oil in it, because if it don't, there's nobody's fault of my own, which is why this week's going. So, all right, let me find a drain pan to catch the oil that's going to be in there, and then we'll pull our cover off and see what we got. Air flag, you're walking in circles. Yep, that's what I'm doing. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if any oil comes out of this thing. Oh, my goodness.
Well, good news, it's got oil in it. <laughs> oh, this is the way my wig's going. I am covered in stinky, nasty gear oil. I can't even touch the camera to turn you guys off. <sighs> I gotta laugh at this point. I got it all over my leg, all over the floor. I got some in my pan, all over me. And uh, if you guys don't know what gear oil smells like, you're missing out on one awesome fragrance. Fragrance. Can't say that word. Let me tell you. <sighs> Let me clean my mess up and then we'll take the cover off. Well, first, first glance here, nothing looks horrible. Uh, no signs of metal shavings, no pieces, no parts, uh, no stripped gears. Oil looks pretty good, honestly. But <laughs> in the true how this week's going fashion, I was gonna get me some rags to lay the parts out on the floor to keep them clean. Check this out. UPS smashed my rags and now they won't fit on my, <laughs> they won't fit on my dispenser because the core is smashed. I should probably go to bed, but I'm too honored to do it. All right, guys, surprisingly, all the sun gears, or the planetary gears, I guess this is the planetary gears, this is the sun gear here. They all, it all looks really good, but our problem is pretty obvious. This here is the drive gear, and that's the hydraulic drive motor right there. And this slides into there. And I don't know how well you can see, but the splines are stripped off of this, and the splines are stripped out of that. That's our problem. So, it's probably gonna require a whole new one because that's gonna be the easiest way to do this. I don't think it'll be the cheapest way to do this, but it'd be the easiest way to do this. But uh, I'm going to send some parts and pictures to old Todd at Trucker Track and see what he can cough up. So um, stay tuned. As soon as I get a plan of action, you guys will be the first one to know. Yeah, that's the plan for now. You, right. you, you, you lost. I do feel lost because it's a uh, get back here in the woods to get to your place. This is all the you, cool you got to be part of all the cool people live. Oh, cool people. So I'm sorry. I I know that. Ironically, I need you because the second job with the 120 did not go as planned. What, what happened? It's, it, it looks great. So See, everything not... everything from here to there. Hey, hey wait, wait that's, that's, my ax, that's my ax handle. I know, I kept it because I'm afraid you're going to beat my new light. Oh, I'm going to whack that sucker. As you can't look at that thing. It's going to get whacked. It's going to get whacked. Let's take a look. What, what kind of problem you have? All right, Faith. First things first, I gotta get used to swinging this stick around. You gotta be from Kentucky to have an axe handle. Everybody in Kentucky gets one at birth. I'll give it back. Oh, thank you. All right, all right, go ahead. Wait, uh, first, first things first. Final drive looks bad. What? Did I get the tracks on correctly? Yes, it looks. You did a great job. Not backwards this time. Good job. Yeah, good job. Good job. I had excellent, to uh, possibly study some video. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I didn't want to call you out on it. You caught yourself out on that one. I, I thought if I put these things on wrong twice, I will never hear the end of it. <laughs> it, it does happen. And to be, to be honest with you, on an excavator, it really isn't going to hurt anything. Really. Oh, now you tell me after I went through all the trouble of changing yeah, it around. Yeah, on a dozer, though, it, it, will, it will make some problems. Well, but anyway, time, it looks good. You did a good job. Got a little bit. All right, so this here what do they call this thing a prop shaft we talked about this a little bit in the first half of the video well it's the, it, it, the propel shaft i've heard it called that or prop shaft that's, i guess it's, that's I guess it's not a, i guess it's not a boat so we'll go with propel shaft that'd be great let's, show, let's put the axe handle up here real quick let me hold that for you so you, you this is the main gear that goes between the pump and the sun gears uh pretty common thing looks like you got a little bit loose down here on the end and, and so that would you call out about twelve thousand hours of digging i would call that a whole lot of forward and reverse is what that would be called. And then over time, that gets loose and starts I don't like to there. sit in one spot, Todd. I, I like know, to move. I know. You know, John Deere used to say that you shouldn't track these more than a mile at a time. Actually, it wasn't even a mile. And then you would get the final drives hot, and then things like this would happen. Hey, let's face facts. Does John Deere really know what they're talking about? No. Okay, exactly. 
Not around here they don't. <laughs> so with Todd's help, we were actually able to round up, uh, well, I got a part from Florida, Belgium, right. and Germany. Great, I'm but they're all coming around the world. <laughs> <laughs> this here is actually one of them that's already come in. This is the part that goes in the pump. Right, the Kepler part. Which yeah. Todd offered to volunteer to pull the final drive out so we can change this. That's super nice of you. I'll get started in about 15 minutes. Yeah, you won't. <laughs> I don't get dirty, folks. You, this is but you know the most disappointing part about this whole thing? What's that? So I put that pretty new light on there. I didn't even get to use it. Well, first of all, we're going to turn it on here in a minute. We're going to check out, see how many lumens, how it looks. Maybe we'll turn the shop lights out really quick. And you then should we're watch gonna, YouTube. Then we're going to whack it. No, you should watch YouTube because we've already turned it on. You hit my light with that axe handle. You're buying it. I'll buy it. We're going to hit it. It's going to happen. I don't, think, axe. I don't think you're tall enough. It's called axe handle review. I'll get up there. We'll turn the lights off. We'll do a really cool dark one and I'll whack it. You want to do it right now? Oh, the battery, the battery. Well, yeah, it's. I mean, it don't move, but it runs. Okay, we're, you're gonna have to turn the switch on. I'm about to feel my way through this. Yeah, position. you're not an operator either, are you? <laughs> but I don't even want to get up in there. You got the dash ticket out of it. Hold on, you gotta find the right switch. Oh yeah. Okay, great. Okay, we're talking about over 5,000 lumen light. And you can tell in the sides, it's actually going to cascade a little bit of light on the sides too. That's why it's kind of a set off on the side. Great light for work. Hey, can, 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 can just stop you real quick? Yeah. We have to point out the LBI sticker that's upside down. Why did you put Luxury Brothers upside down? That's horrible. Huh? I like it. I like LBI. Because whenever Brett flips it over, he can read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up right here in front of the operator's cab. We've got to test it. So let's say you're out one day and you're, you're, you're clearing some trees, some debris, and, and a limb comes around and hits it. We gotta make sure that it's gonna withstand the impact. You know what I'm saying? So this hex handle, hickory, I wanna go hickory, is gonna simulate a limb strike. Okay, so first, we're gonna take this stuff out of the way right here. I don't think your man ever knew that. I don't know. Pretty heavy, <laughs> pretty heavy. <laughs> is, it, is it fragile? Yeah, it's fragile, it's a clutch. Here, look, 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 hey, Hang on. us people from Indiana, we use these handles. Oh, look at that. Okay. All right, Perfect. that was pretty fragile. All right, let's get up here real quick. So let's, uh, okay. Well, so what, what, is the, what is the point of being... What? Why are you... Oh, it's, 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 you've got to test things. You just don't run around willy-nilly and don't test things, do you? <laughs> you most people so do. Gonna, so I am an oak tree, and this is an oak handle. I go more like whack. I go more like soft maple, okay, but okay. Good whack. So you're sitting here excavating. It's dark outside. You may see Bigfoot or something. You're swinging back around. I'm gonna tell you what. That was a hell of a hit, and uh, it, it survived. That, folks, is a test. Matter of fact, I'm not gonna hit it again because it hurt my hands. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the light survived the hit. Full on, turn oh, the lights back on. Let's no, see if it's still, it that's still bright. That was a bad idea. It's still working. Man, I'll tell you what, I hit that thing right in the side and it didn't even put a nick on it. No, it still looks pretty good. I hate to agree with you. I hate when you're right. Do you think I need to hit the light or no? I don't, yeah, well, why not? You done smacked it once. I'll say it one more time. My hands are starting to come unknown. So, anyway, so you're out digging and a tree limb comes around. I don't have any safety glasses on. I really appreciate that. I tell you what, that's a pretty good light right there, folks. You can get those anytime on truckertrack.com and they will stand a hit. Guaranteed. Do I get to come to your shop and start hitting stuff now? No. That'd be a great video. <laughs> you done? I'm done. Now, once you get up there and turn the light on. You know what? That, that, is, that is pretty rude to come to somebody's house and knock their damn light off. You tell them. Yeah. You tell them, man, behind the scenes. I think there's a reason why he's not a mechanic. That's it right there. <laughs> You're going to bend the bracket. <laughs> I got the bracket in a little bit. Hey, that yeah. bracket didn't come from truck and track, so there's no guarantee or warranty on it. Well, we're really, I may need a wrench. <laughs> Sorry, fellas. We're going to have to drive that bad boy around, but it's stuck here. The, uh, the good news is I think it actually come with one, a wrench. <laughs>
All right, guys, let me get you caught up to speed here real quick. It's been about three weeks since we filmed the first half of this video, uh, taking the cover off the final drive, and it's been about two weeks since Todd from Truck or Track was up here uh, doing his axe handle review on my axe handle review on my light up there. Oh, boy, that guy's a mess. So this is where we're at. Uh, I've had a little bit of an issue tracking down some parts. Todd from Truck or Track helped me out some, but this here is the shaft that actually goes in the hydraulic pump so what you're seeing right there is is the end of this uh because it's stripped out as well this here actually come out of florida this shaft here i imported two of them one of them's coming from belgium and one of them's coming from germany why two well i'm gonna try to go ahead and replace the one on the other side before it strips out this piece here but uh our our goal for today is going to be to try to take this final drive out of there we're going to break the track pull it out I gotta take that hydraulic motor apart on the back side to get this shaft in there. But uh, update on a few other things real quick. Uh, oh, where do we start? So we pulled this in here. We had the one job. We call it the Indian burial ground job. We didn't actually hit any Indian burial ground. It's just kind of a joke that everything on the job broke down. But the, uh, the Mac, the clutch is done. It's back on the road. You guys may or may not have seen that by now. Here's the parts that come out of it. Um, that's all that's all doing good um, the Volvo's in the shop you guys I need to get you guys <clears throat> excuse me I need to get you guys caught up to speed so I've mentioned a few times that I've had some issues with the Volvo and they're all missions related now here see how I can politically correctly say this so I think all manufacturers are having issues with their emissions um some more than others i don't want to solely blame this on volvo here's my take on the emissions in a nutshell i understand why we got them i understand why we need them i'm not against them but we these things are so unreliable and so expensive to work on that we have got to come up with a different method or, or ease of regulation or something until we figure it out i have spent more money fixing emission problems on this machine than what I spent putting undercarriage on that machine. That, that's just not right. That machine's got 2,600 hours on it. This machine's got 12,000 hours on it. And I've spent more money keeping this one running than I have rebuilding this one. So that's my argument to something has to change somewhere. I don't know what, there's a lot smarter people in the world than me, but those numbers cripple a small guy and if you're a big guy, it jacks the price so high up on all these jobs, it eventually trickles down to us, whether it's taxpayers or something, because it, it's just, the cost of operating just goes through the roof whenever you get to these things. So here's what, here's a quick little rundown. I haven't filmed a lot of this because I don't know a lot about it. I'm learning as I go. I don't want to say something out of context or, or lead somebody down the wrong rabbit hole. So I'm just going to give you the facts of what's happened to me, then you guys can take it from there. So the first issue I had, I'm not going to take this upper cowling off, but there's actually a def injector where the AdBlue actually injects into the exhaust stream. And I'm assuming this machine set for a while. Whenever I bought it after about 10 hours, I got a, a D-rate warning. And that injector was clogged up. It ended up being a pretty easy fix. I pulled it out. I soaked it in some soapy water. I put it back in. It cleared up and went down the road. That ended up being a pretty simple fix. So I ran for two or three hundred more hours and this thing right here went bad this is what they call the armature and this is the def tank basically what this thing does is it it tells you the state of the def it tells you the ele the level of it, it tells you the concentrate level it tells you the temperature it tells you all kinds of different things these are actually antifreeze lines that goes in to regulate this this temperature here these are the def lines that go over to the def pump here what had happened was in, in Volvo, uh, I guess they had some issues with these. This was a Volvo problem. It stopped reading the concentrate level. If the computer don't know the concentrate level of the def, it don't know how much def to inject. So everything goes haywire and stuff shuts down and dirt perfect gets mad. Uh, that's expensive. It's about three or, I don't know. It's uh, fortunately for me, Volvo ended up warranting it. Uh, so kudos to them, but uh, I would say that's probably about a $3,500 repair in the field. So fast forward again, 
this little solenoid valve is our problem now. This is went bad. What this does is, is this is what the computer regulates. This is how the, the computer controls this to control the temperature in this DEF tank. I think this DEF temperature is supposed to stay somewhere around 100 degrees. And once it gets over 140, it, sh it shows an alarm. Well, that's what we're at here today. So we're gonna have to replace that so we can regulate DEF tank temperature. And hopefully the Volvo's back on the, uh, hopefully the Volvo's back on the road again or back in the dirt again or however you wanna say it. Um, now that I've had that machine back on the job, uh, there is some huge differences between these two machines. Uh, some good, some bad. Uh, there's a lot to cover there. That's going to be a whole, whole, whole different video on that. Uh, I need to set up some experiments to show you, but there is no doubt that machine will flat a double you know what outdig this machine. There is absolutely no comparison. Um, I, I, I got to find a way to show that on video and I'll figure it out. But uh, that's going to be another video for another day. Today, we got to get this thing going because right now that one will outdig this one because that one at least moves. So, and uh, yeah, shop's a mess. It's been uh, been a crazy couple weeks. There's the uh, motor off the air compressor that caught fire and all the other craziness going on. So. Anyways, we're gonna fire this thing up. I believe I'm gonna rotate it so I can get in there the final drive. We're going to uh, bust the track on it, get that final pulled out of there, and uh, make some progress on this. So, yeah, fun, fun, let's do it. All right, guys, couple things here real quick. So I got this cover off. This cover just covers this. Looks like that when it's normal. Four bolts right there it is. Inside here, you basically got four lines. This is the hydraulic drive motor for the final. Uh, that one's marked B, that one's marked A, and then I marked B and A over there. That's basically, if you had those backwards, it's not a huge deal. It's just that you're forward and reverse. Uh, you press forward, one will go backwards. So, not good, but got those marked. This small line here, uh, I got it taped up. I didn't want to get dirty and it's dripping. I need to get a plug for it. It actually goes right here. That is your two-speed travel. That kicks you into high gear. And then this line, it goes up there, is your case strain. So uh, naturally, the way this thing works, oil bypasses it. This gives it a place to escape and go back to the uh, tank. So what we're wanting to do is pull all this out of here, and all these bolts up around here is what holds that into place. But before we take that loose, we need to take the track off. So um the master pin is right there i went ahead and took the keeper out you guys seen us install those keepers when we put the track on like exactly six hours ago it really sucks anyways uh getting off subject here so basically what i did i can't drive this track because the final drives broke so took the jack raised it up a little bit and what i want to do is i want to get that pin somewhere up in here uh that way whenever i go to put it back together uh, it's a lot easier to do and it's somewhat oriented perfect. So what I'm going to attempt to do is take the floor jack down here and uh, spin that track up to where that pin's up here on top. And then we'll take the tension off of it and drive that pin out. Unbolt these bolts and then in theory we should be able to throw that thing up on the bench and uh, take her apart. So let's see if it works. Alrighty, we got that master pin. It's rotated to right there. That's the last tooth on that cog. So hopefully this section of the track will fall away. We can skip that section over one, then lift that final drive up and out there. It's kind of the plan. That's my best guess of orienting that thing the way I want it. I'm gonna go up here and uh, take the track tension off, which is a um, matter of loosening up this grease fitting in this hole right here. Uh, you guys can't see anything. Hold on. 
all right, I loosened that fitting up. I don't know if you guys can see that grease oozing out right there. But basically what that's doing, if you guys remember we put the track on, it allows that front idler to slide back and it'll loosen that track up so we can get it off the back. So we'll let it do its thing. I could open it more, but uh, there's not really a whole lot to gain by that. We're not in that big a hurry, so. All right, guys, Matt's on his way here. He's actually gonna help me uh, pull his track off and uh, get the windshield out of the Volvo. I'll explain about that in a minute. But uh, show you a couple of tools that I picked up. None of this is sponsorship stuff. It's just stuff I kind of grabbed on my own. The uh, first is this the DCL 050 DeWalt light. Uh, I got this for putting the clutch in the back. I was trying to make it a little better to film underneath there. I hope it helped a little bit. I didn't have it take it out, taking it out, but I did have it put it back in. But uh, man, I love this light. Um, I don't know what I ever did without it. This thing is awesome. I wish it had, uh, it sits on the battery. I wish it had like a kickstand or maybe a magnet on it uh, to get it in a few different locations. But overall, uh, super happy with the light. We can go to Vault versus Milwaukee all day long i've got a bunch of dewalt stuff i had it for years i don't really have much problems with it just recently picked up some milwaukee stuff uh my quick take on it i do believe the milwaukee overall is probably a little better stuff i just i don't know if i can justify the extra cost for it yet but uh we're gonna try this is the uh, milwaukee um Catalog number 2861-20, half inch impact. I believe this thing is rated for 500 foot pounds. I uh, hope I'm right on that, if not. But uh, I figured we'd give it a try on busting these final drive bolts loose. We can go ahead and do that while we're waiting on Matt. So let's see what this, uh, this girl does. That's a 24 millimeter socket, what that is. I'm, uh, I'm not going to argue with that result at all. That uh, it's quite impressive, to be honest with you. Well, she's struggling a little bit on that one, but I think it may have dirty threads. Now, what I want to do, just for uh, craps and giggles, is uh, let me show you what I picked up over here on the table real quick. I haven't even got it out of the box yet. This is the Big Dog DeWalt XRP. Um, I don't know what the number is on it. Find it on here somewhere. The DCF 899M1. This is supposed to be rated for uh, 700 foot-pounds of torque, so obviously it's going to be a little stronger than Milwaukee, but it's also twice the size. I'm not sure. I'm thinking I may like the Milwaukee compact version, even though it's a little less torquey than the DeWalt Big Dog. But, uh, oh, all right, let me get it out of the box and I'll show you. Come out of there, you do the little thing. Yeah, look at that brand new still in the package there they are side by side you can see this one here is considerably smaller than this one but this one's also 200 less foot pounds of torque in that neighborhood both half inch drive so i'm gonna throw this socket on this one and uh give it a whirl one and uh see what it does Never know until you try. I'm just kind of uh, curious more than anything. Uh, like I said, over the years, I have got, we, you guys don't know, I owned a construction company for 15 years before I went full time in the excavating and YouTube world. I uh, did the excavating along with it, but we have had a tremendous amount of DeWalt stuff. A lot of DeWalt stuff over the years. And I'm not going to claim it's the best stuff ever made, but for what we paid for and what we did with it, um, I don't really have any complaints. Also had some Milwaukee stuff over the years. Uh, it was good to us as well. It just seemed to be a little heavier. 
and a little pricier. I'm just not sure if those two things are worth it. So, all right, let me stop talking and start working. I'm gonna go to this one up here on top. Now keep in mind the Milwaukee was turning it. It was just struggling a little bit. So let's see what the DeWalt does. The DeWalt still struggled a little bit, but I'll be honest with you, it probably turned it about twice as fast as what the Milwaukee was. But, uh, got some threads boogered up on the end there. I'm not sure what, what we got into, but, uh, but that should be expected. That's what it should do. So let's do another one. Let's try another one. New tools. I'm excited. Oh, come on. I think what that is, is those bolts go through right here, I'm trying to fill that hole. And I think stuff is rubbed like rocks and stuff have got in there in the past. It's probably not near as bad over here because it can free itself. There's definitely a difference between the two, but I don't know. I don't know. I really like that compact size of that Milwaukee. I really like that compact size of that Milwaukee. Time will tell. It's too late to have an opinion on them now. We'll have to use them a little bit here over time. You guys have to stay tuned, but for now, let's bust some bolts loose. I got two bolts loose down there. I got to thinking, why not throw the air impact into the equation and see how it does compared to the other one. I'd say this is pretty comparable in size to the uh, Milwaukee. It's uh, quite a bit smaller than the DeWalt. I know it's hard to see right there. Uh, this is a Husky. I think it's an Ingersoll Rand twin hammer. I don't know the exact specs on this. I want to say it's around 600 foot pounds of torque like 700 peak or something. So it should be really comparable to that DeWalt, maybe just slightly smaller. Uh, actually probably right in between the two, but this is the one I'm pretty familiar with. I've been really happy with this impact. It's, uh, I've had it for years. It's done a good job. So let's see what it does compared to the other two. I guess I better make sure it's in reverse. Oh, that's the wrong one. All right, here we go. Here we go. I don't know if those two bolts just happen to come out easier. The air impact's got that much more finesse. I feel like the air impact in the electric ones have the same hammer, but this one's got more actual spinning torque, so I can spin it out easier with less hammer. I don't know if that made sense, but uh, I didn't struggle with them. That's for sure. So Now, in full disclosure, another thing you guys may not know is I am heavily involved in the stadium seat business travel the country installing and removing stadium seats and uh in that company we own 70 or 80 impacts and we have used every brand imaginable milwaukee dewalt craftsman ryobi makita you name it and hands down the only impact that'll hold up to that abuse of those guys is uh hilti the Hilti impacts are absolutely incredible. I wouldn't say they have the most strength or the, the most powerful ones out there, but their batteries, their chargers, their impacts will outrun any other brand on the market three to one, hands down. No argument. It ain't going to change my mind. I've lived it. I've seen it. Uh, but they are ridiculously expensive. <laughs> so I, I guess it's the old uh, get what you pay for deal. But uh, this is ready to come out. This is totally ready to come out. And uh, I'm gonna probably hold tight, wait on Matt to get here to drive that pin out. He should be here any minute. And uh, we'll yank that thing up out of there. I know it's really hard for you guys to see up in there, but I'm not a very patient individual. 
So I'm going to take my chance on driving this pin out. Mostly just got the camera up there in case something goes catastrophically wrong. So let's hope that's not the case. I think she's going, boys and girls. I think she's going. Hey. Damn, I probably that. I think that actually worked. <laughs> By golly, it did. Hot diggity dang. I've been telling everybody you're supposed to show up for like the last hour. Glad you finally made it. Oh, you're so full of crap. I was 10 minutes late and it's because I was talking to a potential customer for us. So, so It's all right. Still made progress without you. It's a lovely Monday, even though it's Tuesday. It is Tuesday. <laughs> it feels like Monday. All right. So I got all the bolts out. We got the crane hooked up. I got that. You just need to take a hammer and smack that thing around a little bit and hope it comes out. And it just pop right out of there, right? Well, I wouldn't count on it. All right, we're gonna we're gonna let this sit for a second, Mr. Millennial. That's your new name, by the way, Mr. Millennial. It's N Y A Millennial, which stands for not your average. But if you want to call me Mr. Millennial and screw everybody up that tries to find me, that's okay. Okay, Mr. Millennial. <laughs> so, I'll spray those down, even though we're gonna all right, really we're gonna let that set for a little bit. We're gonna deal with that in a minute. We're gonna go back over to the ball though, because uh, let me get you guys filled in on what's going on there. So, the job with the Indians on it, that's what I'm gonna call it from now on. Somehow, I've been op operating an excavator for 15 years, full time, and I never busted the windshield out of one until the other day. Somehow, I threw a log up over a pile, it bounced back up over the pile, and it hit just right, right here on this trim piece, busted this windshield and this windshield. No, I don't have any video or any pictures of it, but I promise you, it happened. Well, what happened when it did that, it messed up this trim piece here. We got an awesome glass shop in town, and they tried their best to straighten that out. That limb hit like, bam, right there. And, well, apparently they didn't get it perfectly straight. Did you see that crack right there? I see that crack right there. Oh, yeah. So, I got a hold of the Volvo dealer, which actually rud. They were pretty good. I can't complain. Uh, how much do you think that piece was? 50 bucks. Keep going. $500. Come down. <laughs> I'm not guessing again. 139.42. Pretty expensive trim. And piece. apparently I'm not the only person that's had this problem. They had it in stock. Imagine that. I'm betting a lot of people bust the windshield. So the good news is this windshield Careful, is a hole. Or you're going to break it the rest <laughs> of the way. <laughs> this windshield is a flat piece of glass. Nice. Not yes. curved. The bad news is it is a pain in the booger to get out of there because it's on tracks and it's like a garage door. It's got little cables and stuff on it. So uh, I didn't show you guys how to get out of there the first time, but we'll show you how to get it out of there the second time. So let's do it. All right, so first things first, we gotta take the shunt. I can't even talk. Shunt? The first. shunt? First things first, we gotta take the sunscreen off, and it just hold the camera pops up you. off there. No, because I'm in the mood to break something. Oh Come on, sir. All right, hold the camera before I break something. Mm -hmm. Pops up off there like so. Oh, come on. Seriously? You need some lubricity. No, there's a little o-ring on there it holds that piece you know on did you read your comments that was a word we were supposed to use on the uh culvert job there in derby with the river view i didn't like my someone just commented that the word you're looking for is lubricity i, I have a sunscreen heard that word or lubristic if you say it's a word i'll believe you doesn't matter i don't think it matters so the next thing you need to do is take these bottom rollers off there's two Torx head screws. What size is that Torx head? Just so everybody knows. I think it's on the top, maybe. Or the 27. Little... T27. T27. Uh, what I did last time, it worked pretty good, is I raised it up about a quarter of the way. And it'll sit on this bar. And it'll sit right there. Because uh, you got to take these cables off on the back side. Which is uh, kind of a pain in the butt. All right. Switch me. Hope I don't fall and hit me in the head now. I agree, especially with a crack in it. Come on, sir. 
You ready for this side to come off as well? Yeah, if you can get it. I think their epoxy got on it, didn't it? Yeah. Then I gotta pull it down, pull the top down. It kind of hinges in there. There we go. Hey. All right, so it's got this little cable on it here. It's kind of a lift assist that, uh, well, it is what it is. So to get those off, you can usually pull them down by hand and then they slide off. I got it one-handed, see how that Two works way. right there? And then if you let that go up real easy, it'll stay right there. All right, one side down, one side to go. But the All right, so we got this. Stay here, yeah. Yeah, windshield should stay. All right, so we got the window resting on this, and I got a rag and a board up there protecting that screen. It's just kind of sitting on top of it. Don't think it's hurting anything. So the next thing is we gotta get these top rollers off. Whoa! About fell out of the track. Yeah. There's a bolt that goes through right here into this top roller, and that's pulling that side out. Yep, there it comes right there. Hold on, let me put the bolt back in the net. There's a spacer in there too that's pretty important. I have it on Yeah, don't want to lose that. That's what it actually uh, allows it to rotate on. Pivot point. There you go. But that's the actual roller assembly. That's your soft stops right there. All right, one side down, one side to go. Let me put the camera down to have All right, off to the glass shop. We get. I'll get the trim piece. It's light. Really hope you can get that out of there without breaking it. I hate for you to break the already broken windshield. Where are we going? That way, sir. And our stop point is. Table, right there. Hell you there. Third time's a charm, Tony. How'd you break it? I didn't break it. It broke itself. I promise. No way. It was a yes way. How'd you do it? I was oh. sick. <laughs> Take his trim piece. And... All right. So Colton claims that that piece is bent doing undue pressure right there because it cracked on him twice. And it will. So I got him a new trim piece. So that's no longer an excuse. It's heavy guys are just like loggers loggers just like loggers no it was a log that did this <laughs> you can't put a square peg in a round oh, hole i'm gonna argue with you i just need a new glass sir okay thank right. you when you need it uh a couple yeah, hours yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go eat lunch however fast mcdonald's drive through is that, that'll work no way i'll have a man here everybody's right. not working uh realistically when can you get it you'll have it tomorrow morning That'll work. All right. Thanks, sir. Thank you. We're out of here. Have a nice day. All right, back from town and back on our final drive project. So uh, we got this all cleaned up. Got as much dirt off of it as we can. We got all the things capped off to keep dirt out of them. We had to pull this one out because we got to get to that bolt. Where's our fancy tool we made? Right Don't want to hit them with an impact. So we made this little hammer wrench out of an extension slash uh, breaker bar that went bad. I don't think that'll be ratcheting anytime soon. But uh, we're gonna go around there and break all those loose, hopefully. bolts are out blue carpet laid out we did put a mark right here i don't think it makes i don't think it matters but at least we can get it oriented back the same way we took it off so you want to see what's behind cover number one sure lift gently and straight up because there should be some plungers in there somewhere oh that's going well <laughs> how gently is gently there buddy you want me to stand up on this table to take it that's out all you got well you said gently right I know what happens whenever we do it the other way. Oh, there we go. Turn that over upside down, later on the table. 
beautiful. Now, can you uh, lick all that hydraulic oil out there for me? I'll get you your straw. Well, that's no fun. <laughs> Maggie! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does need to be oriented right, look. Two and one. Yep, see? So it does have its own timing mark. Yep. Cool. Gotta pay attention. Oh, I had a teacher one time said pay attention, don't cost a dime. Yep. All right, so let's... Uh, you just had wanted to stick your finger I did, I don't know so why. Bad. That was did not you? very smart. <laughs> let's drain her. All right, tops off, oil is drained. We marked this cartridge right here. We got a bolt in there. A little bit of luck, we should be able to pull. Pull that up. Probably just a little more than pull. You want to pull that up? There we go. There we go. Good boy. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now, what I think we should be able to do is we should be able to lift that. Of that, and voila! Voila! We voila. have the shaft we're looking for. I see one problem though, sir. Do you see the problem? That's not the problem. The problem is that shaft. And the shaft we got is different. All right, whenever we left you guys, we realized these shafts were different. And we'll get to that in a second. But uh, guess what? We got window. We got new window glass. They don't have a crack in it. And we got a fancy new trim strip on it. Woo! Tell you what. I guess uh, we'll put it in the opposite way we took it out. I think that'll work. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Side, so that it'll stay up in there and then put the other side on while I'm holding it. Oh, uh, that may make sense. It may make sense to put that side on because it's the hardest one to get to because we can get to this side. Kind of why I said this one. I'm not going to give you credit for being <laughs> smart, but give it to me. Here's the bolt and the shim and the nut. So this is kind of, uh, is this the right side? I'm just guessing. Well, the window's upside down. It is upside down. Stand by, folks. Don't set it on the Stand small trim piece. Yeah, don't set it on the new trim piece. That way. Exactly. <laughs> Here's Baz man behind the scenes. All right, so multi-part little thing here. See? Multi-part little yeah. thing. This little spacer right here, this is what allows it to rotate freely. See how that goes in there? Then this piece here is threaded. So the bolt goes through there, threads onto there. And then... Uh-huh, uh-huh. They got this nut that goes back here. I guess that's just to back that up to make sure it don't... Um, kind of like a doubly make sure it doesn't vibrate yeah, out. Yeah, so don't come in on your head one day. And then they got these O-rings in here you can replace, I guess, if it gets to vibrating too much. So. Yeah. And that's like it. other YouTubers can't hear you talking because your door's vibrating too much, like a skid steer maybe? Pretty much. Okay. But uh, it's an awful complicated system for a window. It just goes up and down, but whatever. All right, you ready to put this in? I'm ready, are you ready? Yeah, I was ready 10 minutes ago. Yeah, next on the list is to get these cables on. I gotta reach up in that hole, grab it. It's smooth on one side, it's not on the other. Assuming that makes a difference. All right, can you raise it up a little bit? Yep. Oh, man. Right there. Oh, oh hold on. Sorry, people, I had to put you down. All right. You got her. That one clipped on there. <clears throat> one to go. Do the other one now. Come up just a little bit. A little bit more. Right there. Oh, too much. Right there. All right. Put it out. Perfect. All right. Now, you got to put these on. 
these boogers are kind of a pain in the butt this little ledge right here has to slide up in that little crack kind of rotate in place kind of thing yeah just like that there it goes all right let all me right. get a bolt just that easy yeah just that easy might do some wiggling around there it goes Let's start yep sweet Bolts are still in here. Yeah, next on the list is the uh, sunshade. It just kind of snaps into place with the exception of the... Actually, you can put this on first. We took this off first. I know, but you can put it on first. Okay. Uh, close your window on yeah. down. Make your latch. Oh, yeah. We got to go. Perfect. That just snaps down on the top. Like a so. All right, and then two little rods. Come on, you. Two little rods go up in there, and then little screws go on them right there. All right, last thing. Put the bottom glass in. And see if the top and bottom glass agree with each other. Oh, come on. It's hard to do one handed. <laughs> See what happens. Oh, ho, 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 ho. nice. That will work. Let's See how long you keep from breaking it. Hopefully, another 15 years. That's how long the last one made it. Well, not in this machine, in that machine. Mm -hmm. You guys get the point. There you have it, guys. I believe the Volvo is ready to roll again. Uh, everything fits tight, seals up good, uh, like it's supposed to. Back, uh, back to pre-tree incident. And uh, thanks to Thomas Glass, man. We're lucky to have some good local companies around here. Uh, I didn't get any video of it, but we got that heater control valve changed on the depth tank here. Hopefully that takes care of that issue. So uh, this girl is ready to roll back out. And now onto the 120. We're making some progress on it. Let me show you what we come up with here. So this is the shaft that come out. This is the shaft they sent me. And there is a bunch of very noticeable differences from length to uh, snap ring grooves to the diameter of the top. I mean, we could go on and on and on again here. They're not even close. This is like a miniature version of the one I need. So, uh, I got a hold of the guy, uh, Southern Tractor Parts in Florida. John, I think's the guy's name. I called him up, I said, hey man, I don't think this is right. And um, he basically said they have a whole bunch of these on the shelf. They're old overstock. They're not marked. He must've grabbed the wrong one. I guess he's got the specs and should've measured it out. So I sent him his fancy little drawing of all the measurements on the shaft and he called me back and says he does have one on the shelf and is gonna overnight it to me. So hopefully it'll be, I told me he didn't have to overnight it because it may be a week before I get back on this project. But uh, he was nice enough to do that. So he is sending me that shaft. Uh, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and order a seal and bearings for this while I got it apart and while I'm waiting on parts. They don't look bad, but they've got, I mean, they've been used, let's face the facts. So anyways, uh, yeah, oh. One last thing, this is the old shaft here, and these are the two new shafts that come in, and those do look correct. This one's made a little bit different than that one, but the splines are the same, all the measurements are the same. Um, I think this one's aftermarket, and this one's actually factory, uh, believe it or not. I'm gonna, pull, I'm gonna pull one out of this side and hopefully get away with just replacing this and not replacing this, but uh, that's to be determined, so. Uh, this, this girl's gonna be back in the dirt. She's gonna be more reliable than that other one I ever thought about being. So I'm not giving up on her yet. It's been uh, it's been been a great machine. So, but guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, we got one of the two out of here. So hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.